Hello and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I can't believe it's already the last week of April. I feel like the month has passed by so fast, but also so slow. Um, I don't know. Like every time I'm trying to film, my neighbor's dogs keep barking. I, I don't know what's up. Like, who the fuck is it? Almost at the end and this is my last week vlogging, at least for now. I'll definitely do weekly reading vlogs in the future because I know that everyone seems to love them and I've had a really good reception to all of these vlogs but it's definitely very stressful for me to vlog every week I just don't have the brain capacity to like vlog and edit and upload um, every single week like I'm trying to upload my third vlog right now and it's not going well because I don't know why it goes to like 13% uh, upload it and then it just goes back to the start and starts again I don't know and it's freaking me out and uh, I basically haven't done anything today besides all of this like finishing editing the vlog and it's just so time consuming I basically have spent all my Tuesdays just editing and uploading and uh, yeah it's back at 8% what the fuck but yeah, it's very stressful for me to do it every week. At least for now, I don't have the brain capacity and the organizational skills to do that. But I would definitely like to do more weekly reading vlog. Uh, if I have an interesting week, I'll definitely show you guys. Like, what the fuck? Why do the dogs keep barking? And this readathon is going super duper well because I've already finished all the prompts that I needed for my career so now I'm just doing extra prompts for fun and so yeah this week I'm going to be starting and finishing these two books um, Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig and Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf this one is just like I want to read it and yeah it's just for me uh, and I've already started I I read like 10 pages yesterday <laughs> and Mrs. Dalloway is for uh, Herbology which is a book that starts with an M and yeah I have read Virginia Woolf in the past but I didn't really like the one that I read a lot I really liked the writing but that was basically it the story wasn't that interesting um, <coughs> But this one I think it's probably Virginia Woolf's most popular novel and it's super short so I should be able to read this quickly this week. Um, but yeah, those are the two books that I'm reading and today to be honest I don't think I'll be able to read anything because the video isn't uploading, I don't know why. Yeah, it's almost... it's... yeah, it's 6.30 p.m. so... so I've already wasted my whole day. Um, this isn't a good start to the vlog. Also, I'm super annoyed at myself because my sleeping schedule is shit. I've just been going to sleep later and later every single day. Like yesterday I went to sleep at 4 a.m. and I hate that. I hate going to sleep super uh, late and today I am going... I'm hoping to go to bed early. Earlier than 4. Like what are you doing here? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm hoping to go to bed earlier than 4 a.m. Um, but yeah, I'll see you probably tomorrow. Five minutes later. Okay, five minutes later, I'm back because I forgot to tell you that I finished my audiobook for Heretics Anonymous by... I should have prepared. <laughs> I don't know her name. But yeah, I finished the audiobook today and I really, really liked it. I feel like I'm going to think about this book a lot. I really, really relate to this book because I'm an atheist and I studied at private Catholic schools my whole life um, from when I was a child until like even my university was a Catholic school basically it was a cat catholic university so i just related and connected to a lot of the topics brought up in the book and i just really related a lot to the main character and what he thought of religion what he said to lucy because he was an atheist and she wasn't and all of that debate i've had at several points in my life especially because i'm an atheist but my boyfriend is catholic so we talk a lot about religion but yeah, I really like the book, I really like the characters, even the main character who 
I really related to was very flawed and I really liked that and their family relationships were also great and the friend dynamic between the heretics group was also great. I just, overall, it was a really great book. I ended up giving it 4 stars on Goodreads but it's probably like a 4.5 stars out of 5 to be honest. I really really enjoyed it. I think it was a very unique book. I just connected to it a lot and I saw a lot of myself in the book and I really liked that. I really like to feel seen and it was a very enjoyable audiobook and now we've reached that part of the month where nothing is available on Scribd and <laughs> I don't know what to listen to. I think I'm going to listen to The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Foley? I think this is June's pick for Books and Lala's um, book club. I had never heard of this book but I heard Kayla talk about it and to be honest the book seems very interesting and I don't read a lot of thrillers so it's always nice to change uh, my reading a bit and also that way I can participate in the live stream and the discussion around the book when the time comes so I think I'm gonna listen to that I hope it's a good audiobook because uh, with thrillers on audiobook it's always a bit risky but I'm gonna try it but yeah, I'm gonna go back to video uploading and s wasting time on this. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, happy Wednesday. So I haven't read today anything. Yesterday I just spent the whole evening trying to get my video up and I finally did after a long time and having to use uh, another laptop because my laptop wasn't working for some reason but I'm gonna start reading right now and I thought I would make a cup of tea but I want to try something different which I've never tried which is a very British thing and uh, people here in Portugal don't really do that which is to put milk in your tea and I'm really curious to know if I'll like the taste of it so I think I'm gonna make a cup of that and then I'll come back and do a little taste test in front of you and then I'm gonna start reading five minutes later Okay, so here it is in my Parks and Rec mug. I'm kind of um, nervous to taste it. I don't know. I think the Brits will crucify me if I don't like this. So this is English breakfast tea, which normally I never drink, but I thought it would work better for this. I don't know. And then with a bit of almond milk. It literally just smells like my almond tea, so I don't know if it will taste like anything. I don't know. I didn't put a lot of milk, but still. Okay, let's try it. First of all, it's too hot. It tastes like tea and almond milk. <laughs> what was I expecting? <laughs> I don't know, but it, it tastes nice. I don't know, I don't see myself drinking this a lot. I do prefer just tea or coffee with milk. Um, but yeah, this is different, I think. Yeah, it tastes like tea with almond milk. Nothing special, but yeah, I finally tried it. Also, it's too hot outside to be drinking this, but yeah, I like to sweat. Um, so now I'm just gonna read and drink this, and I'll see you later.
literally been drinking one of these milkshakes every day and ah, uh, they're so good. I could drink them all day every day and I wouldn't get tired. It's basically just one banana, a tablespoon of peanut butter, a handful of spinach and then some like milk of your choice. I put almond milk and it tastes so good and oh my god. And I could leave the spinach out but at least I'm getting my spinach without even noticing. I always try to mix in some vegetables in my juices and uh, milkshakes and whatever just to get my greens in and like it doesn't even taste like spinach at all. It basically only tastes like peanut butter and that's what I love. But enough about my milkshake and more about me. <laughs> I'm kidding. But actually before I talk about books and stuff since this is a reading vlog I'm gonna talk about myself and my um, sleeping or lack of sleeping because since all of this started I don't have classes and I don't have to leave the house and I also don't have online classes because I'm taking photography classes and those are mostly practical like taking photos so I can't just do that with my class at home so I haven't been having classes basically so I don't have any responsibilities to wake up to so my sleeping has been very bad. I have been going to sleep later and later every day. I have already talked about this in another vlog but I got to a point where I was going to bed at 4 30 a.m. Um, and it's not good and I hate it. I hate going to bed late and I get this a lot especially in the summer when I don't have responsibilities and the only thing to break me out of this habit of sleeping late and waking up late it's to basically do like shock therapy one day and it's what I did today and what I mean by shock therapy is not literally shock therapy it's to basically have one day where you go to bed very late and wake up really early so you basically get no sleep at all I got four or five hours of sleep today I woke up at 8 30 and it was painful as fuck it was awful I hate waking up early for the first two hours of the day I was just like but I hope it works and I hope that today I get sleepier earlier in the night but it probably will because since I'm lacking so much sleep I'm one of those people that needs to get eight hours of sleep every day otherwise I like die <laughs> and now I'm here and now let's talk about books today I finished Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig and I really enjoyed this a lot. I give this book four stars but to me four stars on a self-help book it's basically a five stars. I just don't give it five stars because I feel weird giving a self-help book five stars but it was definitely an interesting read. I got a lot out of it. I actually I, I'm not one to annotate books. I never annotate books but this one I actually like dog-eared a lot of pages. I don't know if you can see that and I underlined a lot of quotes as well. Okay. And it was mostly things that I needed a reminder of sometimes and he also makes a lot of lists. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Uh, like what I tell myself when things get too much. You can't really see that. But it's like a lot of bullet points that I think are really important. And honestly I would recommend this book to everyone. Especially to, for like people who don't like to read a lot. This one is so easy to read because the chapters are literally two pages long, sometimes less even. Like sometimes it's just like a couple of phrases. It's really easy to get to and very fast to read and really interesting and very important and that was a lot of adjectives and I will stop now. <laughs> and sometimes I was reading a few chapters and I thought well this is all obvious what I'm reading but I also like that. I also like that it makes a lot of obvi obvious statements because sometimes we need a reminder of those obvious statements like give your brain some rest and don't spend so much time on your phone and looking at news can be harmful. Like we all know that but it's really important to keep those things in mind. And the thing with self-help books is that I always end the book and feel like okay I'm never going to read this again. I got what I got out of the book and it's over for us now but with this one I feel like uh, it deals with so many different topics and that we all struggle with that you can read this every year and maybe find something 
different to focus on every time because I definitely connected a lot with some of the chapters in it but then others I wouldn't connect as much but maybe if I read this in like two years I would connect with those like for example there was a whole section about working and I I don't work, I am not a working woman, I am still studying, so I didn't connect with that. But once I start working, maybe I'll read this and I'll connect to that part and other parts in the book. So yeah, overall a good read and now I'm going to move on to Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which will be my last book this month probably. I still haven't started it, but I'm probably not going to today, maybe I'll read the first few pages. Right now I'm actually gonna go for a walk and then I'll come home have dinner and then I'll probably watch a movie so I don't think I'll be reading anymore today I have read like more than half of this today so I already did a lot of reading <laughs> I'm gonna finish my smoothie and I'll see you tomorrow hello so I'm gonna keep this short because I currently have the biggest migraine ever I actually have chronic migraines so I get them a lot but I usually take medication to not get them every day but yesterday I didn't take my medication so now I'm just yeah I have the biggest migraine on the planet and I can't even think and just to update you even though I filmed the video I didn't really have a great day I actually forced myself to put on some makeup and film a video so I didn't feel so bad that I didn't do anything I didn't read I only watched TV shows so yeah, I was a couch potato today, but that's okay. I feel like I need some days like that. But I was actually about to start editing the video that I filmed and I realized that there's a lot of background noise and also that the camera is completely out of focus for most of the video. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that because I can't really refilm that video. Um, but it's a shame, to be honest. I was feeling really good about it, but now I just feel like it's shit and I want to delete it but I don't think you expect very good videos from me anyway <laughs> so today I didn't read hopefully tomorrow I will I just don't feel like reading to be honest because I feel very down and yeah I don't have the mental capacity right now to read <laughs> um, but yeah I'll see you tomorrow Hey guys, so long time no see. I haven't filmed for the last two or three days. I don't really know, I think three days. Um, and that's because I wasn't feeling my best. My PMS got the best of me and I really was feeling like shit. So I didn't want to force myself to film anything. And to be quite honest, I didn't even read the past couple, three days. So I wasn't gonna come here and say, Hey guys, I didn't read today. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to take a couple of days to myself and uh, yeah, just focus on myself and do other things other than booktube and reading. So I watched a lot of booktube, TV shows, movies. I just basically sat on my bed and looked at the screen for the whole three days. When I'm not feeling my best, I don't really feel like reading, which I think it's very uncommon for us readers, but I just, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I didn't even feel like picking up my audiobook. And I actually prefer this way because if I was having a bad day and I forced myself to read a book, I would have uh, a bad memory and a bad attachment to that book because of that experience and uh, the fact that I was having a bad day. So just makes sense that I take a break but I am feeling better today um, so don't worry and I had my first online class today in the morning and it was an experience it's so weird and also I have a lot of Wi-Fi issues in my room so that was kind of a struggle but yeah and I am still reading Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I am <laughs> 36 pages in. <laughs> the, well, the book is less than 200 pages, so that's not that bad. Uh, but still, I want to read a couple of pages today, at least till page like 50 or 60. And when I was reading this last Thursday, I figured out something. I don't like old books. And what I mean by this is not the content, but of the fact that the book 
is physically old. I bought this book uh, secondhand and I honestly love buying things secondhand. I always try to thrift as much as possible and I really love it because not only am I being sustainable and helping the planet but also I'm getting something that is probably unique like for example this book I've never seen this cover in my life uh, and I love that aspect of it but the thing is I am kind of a clean freak I hate dirty things I just I physically can't see something dirty and the thing is I can't clean this book this book was published in 1996 yeah, 1996. So this book is older than me and uh, I don't know who has touched it and what they have done to the book and that makes me um, very icky and I don't like it. Because <laughs> with clothes you buy something secondhand and you can always come home and wash it and it will basically be brand new. But with books you can't do that. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop buying books secondhand. Uh, because, as I said, I'm very much into sustainability, so I always like to help and not buy things that I could get elsewhere. And I definitely prefer being sustainable uh, than being um, a clean free. So I'm just gonna stop thinking about it. And also I hate the smell of old books. I know some people love it, but I just... No ma'am. No ma'am. So I'm reading this today and I have also done some progress on the guest list, uh, the audiobook that I was listening to and I'm almost halfway through with it and I'm really liking it. At first I wasn't really uh, paying that much attention and I at first got a lot of characters mixed up but now I know who they are and I'm really invested and the fact that we still don't know who died uh, up until this point is really making me want to just finish finish the damn book because I want to know what happened, what happened at the wedding, like what the fuck because we just see little glimpses of the night of the wedding and we know that someone died but we don't really know who and I want to know and um, so now I'm just gonna read and I'll update you later. Hello everyone. So I actually just finished the audiobook for the guest list and I wish I had liked it more. I kind of predicted a lot of what was going to happen or like the twist of the story I predicted pretty much. But I still enjoyed the book. I thought it was a very well constructed uh, story and narrative and I like seeing all the different point of views. But yeah, I still predicted uh, much of what was going to happen and I felt like the ending was a bit rushed. I wanted to see a little bit more of some characters that I didn't see at the end. I ended up giving four stars on Goodreads but I'm not sure if it's a three or a 3.5. It's probably a 3.5 stars out of five um, or a three. I don't know, I have to think about it. I literally just finished the book, so I still have to process and uh, see if that's my conclusive star rating. And I am halfway through with Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. And it's so weird, yesterday I was reading this and I had a lot of flashbacks from when I was reading The Great Gatsby earlier this month. And that is probably because both those books are published in the 20s. This one is from 1925 and The Great Gatsby 1926. So there's one year difference from these two books and uh, I don't know, I just see a lot of similarities, especially in the language, which is also my biggest problem with these books is the not even the language, but the punctuation used. Uh, the phrases are so long and they use a lot of commas and a lot of like little... I don't know what it's called. I feel like the punctuation doesn't make the book flow as well as it could have flown. But they both talk about parties in the 20s and uh, the writing is pretty similar. At least to me, I know nothing about classic literature, so... Maybe that's why I'm making these comparisons that have nothing to do with one another. But even with all of this, I'm liking this one more than The Great Gatsby. Uh, maybe because it follows a woman. It also kind of had some bi-representation in the beginning of the book and I was like, 
yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> and I still have half of the book to read in the next few days, so I should be able to because uh, it's only like a hundred pages left. Um, so yeah, those are my updates. And another thing that I wanted to talk about, which maybe I shouldn't, uh, given that it's a good thing, but basically lately I've been gaining so many new subscribers and it's honestly overwhelming. Um, kind of. I'm really happy that I'm getting a lot of subscribers, but also I feel I'm kind of starting to feel in the pressure because in the last month I gained like 120 subscribers. I feel like that's a lot, at least to me, to my, like the size of my channel, it's a lot and I don't know what to do with myself. I'm always like happy but also freaking out yeah, and very overwhelmed. And my type 6 personality also doesn't help because I'm always thinking that people are only subscribing to me to make fun of me and that they're judging me and making fun of me and yeah, that's how my brain has been for the past week. But I'm still very grateful for the people that have been joining and deep down I'm really happy that people are finding my channel and sticking around and liking my content and yeah, that means a lot. And at the moment, I'm almost at 400 subscribers, which I think is insane. I can't even wrap my head around 400 people watching my content. I'm gonna stress now. I'm just really insecure and when people start paying attention to me, I just uh, peace out bye. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm still gonna continue making content and pushing myself to not feel all of the things and not let my destructive behavior get in the way <laughs> but yeah that was my update for today and now i'm gonna continue listening to hannah montana like one does hello so yesterday i didn't film again <laughs> I'm so sorry, but honestly, I just had a very busy, busy day um, because I decided, me and my mom decided that we wanted to make sushi from scratch. Um, please don't do it. Please don't do it at home. Just order your sushi from a person that actually knows how to do sushi because we spent like three hours making sushi and uh, was it worth it? Not really because when it came time to actually eat the sushi I was just so tired of looking at sushi and uh, dealing with it that I just didn't feel like eating <laughs> It took not only a lot of my time but also my um, mental well-being and I just got really tired from making sushi at I slept so well because I was really really tired of just like standing and doing things and, and concentrating and yeah, at least it tasted good. It didn't look good, but it tasted good. Um, so yeah, that's what I did yesterday and today is the last day of the month and I still haven't finished this. Um, am I going to finish this today? Probably. I just filmed a video uh, which I... I wanted to do. I really want to finish this this month. I hate going into a month and still having a book left behind. I'm definitely going to make an effort to finish this today. I have a hundred pages left still, um, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna push it through. I've already filmed a video. I'm gonna take off the makeup and all of this and I'm going to just spend the afternoon reading. It's still 3 p.m. so I have a lot of time and if I really set my mind to it I can finish this today but honestly I just feel like Miss Virginia Woolf is putting me in a in a reading slump. Like who the fuck are you to put me in a reading slump? But yeah I don't feel like reading but I am going to I'm going to try and read today and hopefully finish this. If not, I'll finish it tomorrow. It's not no big deal. I'll probably still include it in my April wrap up. But please don't judge me <laughs> if I finish this on May 1st. It's the same thing. It's just a couple hours difference. So yeah, now I'm gonna read and I'm gonna organize my room because whenever I film I just completely put my room in shambles. So. I'm gonna start that out and I'll see you 
later. So it is 8 p.m. right now and the sun is setting outside so I have to film this quickly. Um, but I have finished Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and I really enjoyed the second half of the book a lot more than the first one. I did read the last 50 pages on audiobook because I was doing my May spread for my bullet journal so I couldn't really read and do the bullet journal at the same time multitasking and even though I compared this book to The Great Gatsby I did like this one a lot more I didn't really like that this book didn't have chapters but I really like how she goes from one perspective of a character to another in like a few sentences and it's so fluid you, sometimes you can't even tell that she shifts uh, perspectives uh, of the characters. You really have to pay attention uh, to what she is writing. This book deals a lot with mental health and also talks a little bit about bisexuality, which I thought was so interesting. Uh, written in the 20s about bisexuality. Wow. And then I actually searched online and Virginia Woolf was bisexual. I had no idea. And now I just want to read all of her books because she's a bicon, basically. And so I finished my last book of the month. I think I read like 12 books this month, which is crazy. And I finished my owls really early in the month, like in the first half of the month. So I did complete a lot more owls than I was originally planning on. And now I'm just gonna give a little bit of an overview of all the owls that I completed. So first of all, for my career, I finished The Starless Sea for Astronomy. I finished Mad, Bad and Dangerous to Know for Charms. I finished Sulking Jack the Ripper for Divination. And I finished Before the Devil Breaks You for History of Magic. And then the other prompts that I also did were I read The Great Gatsby for Arithmancy. I read The Raven Boys for A Care of Magical Creatures. I read The Guest List for Defense Against the Dark Arts. I read Mrs. Dalloway for Herbology. I read Heretics Anonymous for Muggle Studies. And I read LA Ghosted for Potions. And the only two owls that I didn't do were Ancient Runes and Transfiguration. Because honestly, I couldn't find books with those topics in my TBR. Um, and I can't really buy books right now, so I'm really proud of myself because I really read a lot this month, which I wasn't really expecting, but also this month felt like it lasted a lifetime, uh, it just wouldn't end for some reason, maybe it's because I'm at home all the time, I don't know, but yeah, that concludes my Owls vlogs and the Owls readathon and the month of April, and I really hope you liked all of these vlogs. I know this one is very very boring and it's just me talking for I don't know how many minutes but I I, st I still hope you enjoyed it somehow and I will be doing a lot more vlogs in the future because I know that people like vlogs. I also like watching vlogs so I get it and uh, yeah I will see you on my next video. Bye!